Hi guys, and welcome to the lecture Energy System Analysis. My name is Anas Abu Zaid, and this is the first lecture of the series um, of lectures within the course. So first we start with the basics of programming in Python. And this is what we uh, are going to, to do within this course. So I am using Spider. It is one of the IDEs for Python. In the literature, you will find how to install uh, Anaconda and Python and how to use one of the IDEs so that you can use uh, or program or write a code in Python. Just quickly, so here we can see the editor, which file it is, where it is exactly, the path of that file, and what is the active path here that you see on the top right. Uh, so that's called the editor. Here you can have separate codes or separate scripts. The second one here is the console. So whatever you write here, for example, let's say A equals one. This is not applicable unless you basically run it. Either run the current line or all of the selection. While in the console, for example, if you say A equals one, this is basically executed. So if you go to the variable explorer, you can see now that A is a type or it's an integer with a value of one. In Python, we have four types of data, um, let's say generally. So it can be an integer, like one, for example, this is an integer, or a float, 1.0 or 1.1, this is a float, or a string, something in double or single quotation, so something like A, B, C, D in a quotation that is a string, or in a double quotation that's also a string. So these are the same. There are other types of data, of course, for example, a Boolean, like true or false. So this is um, another type of data. If you see here, there is nothing that is defined. So we did not assign these values of integer or um, float, string, or a Boolean to anything. So you, you see that there is nothing that, that is changing here. One tip, maybe before we start um, delving more into the coding, I always like to use the variable name A because when I have different variables here or lots of variables, I can always find it in the beginning. That is the, the new variable that I just defined. So for example, if we say A equals one, we did it already previously. So it's an integer type or a, the type of it is integer. How can I double check this one? So let's say that we don't have the variable explorer here. We cannot see it like in other IDEs, not spider. So you write an internal function in Python that is called type. So if you say type of A, because we already defined A, so it will see it. type of A is basically an integer. So here, every time there's a shortcut, for example, if I'm, 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 let's say I'm at this line, line 17, and I want to run it, you can edit the shortcut basically from the tools and preferences you can assign your um, shortcut. So for example, in my case, it's control enter. In other cases, it might be F9. You can change it to anything that you want so that it won't be confusing. How is it I'm moving from here and there? How am I executing this line? So we said type of A can give me what exactly is the type of this data entry, which is A. For example, if I say B equals 2.0, and then here you see that we have now a new um, variable in the variable explorer. What's the type of B? It is a float. We can define float also in a different way. Let's say uh, I want two without the dot zero, but to be defined as a float. So for example, we said previously A is one and the type of A is an integer. So if I say I want float of A, it will be converted to float. But here, take care that because we did not assign it, so we did not say A equals float of A, A still is an integer. If we execute this line now, you can see that now A is turning into a float. Same thing for the integer. We said B is an integer. Let's say B equals instead of 2.0, 2.5. What is B? B is 2.5. I can say an integer of B. So it will convert it from a float to an integer. Again, we did not assign it. So we did not say B equals integer of B. 
That's why you still see it as a float. If you execute this line now, B is basically turned into an integer. The decimal points or the decimal numbers are basically removed. So now B is an integer. Same thing for the string. Let's say if we go down a bit, just to make some space, and we say, we said previously, so let's say C equals a string, so a, a single quotation, A, B, C, D, and this is how we define a string. Let's say we want to define it in a different way. So there is an internal function called str, so string, and from there you can write basically anything here. It has to be in a quotation if it's a character like this or a different number. So a string of two is basically two. So it put the, the, sorry, the single quotations alone without doing it. But if you say string of A, B, C, D, this will give you an error because A, B, C, D is basically undefined. So if you define this one, it will say this one is not defined. So in this case, it needs to be within a single quotation. So string of A, B, C, D is basically a string. In this case, it's basically a no-brainer. I just wanted to, to let you know that it is possible. For example, if let's say D equals 2,512 and string of D, basically we convert this one here into a string. So again, here D, it's an integer, but since we did not assign it, so we did not say D equals, so it's always, if you assign it, then it will be updated. If you do not assign it, something like this, then the original value will have its own, or let's say its original type, value, everything, but the result will become, or basically will show in the, um, in the console or in the console. So string of D in this case, it's a string of 2,512. So um, another type of data is basically the Boolean data. For example, if we say true, oops, true, so not a cell, only this line, or false. So for example, we can say A, A equals to, or let's say E equals true. So in this case, you can see that it's a boolean of true, um, or C equals <clears throat> false. Sorry. So again, now we have used the C before, so C, D, E, and then this is F as a false. So that's another type of data that we can use, or we can say E equals pool of one. So this is basically true. We have several other types of data, for example, the complex numbers. Uh, we will not be using them, let's say, in the course of energy system analysis, at least for now, uh, but it's good to know. So if you want to define a complex number, there is a built-in function called complex. So the first one is the X, the real number. The second entry is basically the uh, imaginary number. So complex of two and five is basically two plus five J or 5a. In this course, we will not be using any complex um, calculation or complex number calculation, but it's good to know. It's, it might be handy sometime. So um, from this, we have the, the basic data types that we will be using, mostly either in this course or in other courses or in other uh, applications of Python. So from here, we move to the mathematical operation. So for example, if we say a, uh, sorry, 1 plus 5, that's Six. One minus six minus five. Multiplication. So one of one, let's say four times twelve. Um division four over seven. So we can see, for example, that we have the output here. So for example, if we say what is the type of the output? Because if we say one plus five, that's a six. So the type of it is an integer. If we say the type, so we know we need to know not only the, the input type, but also the output, because sometimes we might use it. So if you I go down one minus six, the type is again an integer. So minus four or minus five in this case, same thing would go here. So it's the type of that. And finally, four over seven. So that's here is a float. So the 0 0.57, that's a float. We can use mathematical operation between 
integer and uh, or integers and float. So let's say if I say two times four point five, or let's say four point eight, or nine point six. In this case, it's evidently a, a float. Just to double check. So why am I say teaching you what is the importance of the type of output? Because when you go to more complex codes, you might need to have the same um, data types in order to compare them or in order, in order to plot them or, or in order to get insights from this data. So it's very important to know what exactly is the type of data that you are dealing with. And let's say if we try it, so two times four, that's an integer. But if we say 4.5, because the output will be nine, but since it's a combination of integer times a float, then the output was basically a float, so 9.0. Same thing if you say two times two dot. So two dot here is basically a float, and this two here is basically an integer. So if you multiply them, integer times integer, Oh, sorry, integer times load, the output will be basically uh, a float. Another type of mathematical operation is the power. So let's say two to the power of four, that's 16. Another thing that I wanted to also show, so we have this one here, um, is basically the remainder of the um, Euclidean um, division. So the other way around. So two over four, so basically it's the remainder. If I say five over four, that would give me a one. So basically it's the, the um, well-known division with remainder or Euclidean um, division that we might also um, be using in this course. So we talked about the different mathematical operations, the multiplication, plus, minus, division, the uh, power of, and uh, the, the Euclidean or the remainder division. Let's say say equals one. Oh, sorry, um, one plus two points. So that's an integer, and that's a float. We can add them up. But if we say, for example, two as a string plus two, this is not possible, right? Why? Because they are different. So this is an, a string, and this is an integer. You can't add them up even as a float. For example, you can't add them up. So it might happen, for example, that you have a data where those numbers were defined that you have, for example, a set of numbers that were defined as strings. How can you do mathematical operation on them? Is by saying, let's say, for example, D equals a string of 45. If we say D plus two, we will know that would give us an error. But if we say integer of D, for example, plus two, in this case, it will not give, give us an error. Let's say D was 45.5. So we know that 45.5 plus two, that's 47.5. If we say as an integer, right, we found this D as an integer, this will give us an error. Why? Because it is a float. So unlike what we did previously, where we said, okay, um, for example, A equals one, and what's the float of one? We can convert from integer to float in this case. Here, it is not possible. So if this number is a float and you say integer of D, we'll give you an error. So in this case, you should do a float of D, for example, plus two, and this will give you the correct answer. Another cool thing in Python, especially in the data operation, in the mathematical operation, let's define, for example, again, so here, one thing that I also wanted to show you, you can, let's say you have different variables already defined. So if you remove everything here, you basically clear up all the variables. So A previously was defined. If you say A here, it's basically not defined. So you removed everything. So you start from scratch or you can start from scratch. So one thing, for example, you say A equals five. Let's just start simple. So if I want to say A plus five, that's then. And if I want to assign this new value to A itself, so here A is still five. I want to add five on top of it. So previously we did it like this, A equals A plus five. 
Now A is 10. But cool trick in Python is basically A plus equal five. Now A is already 10. So let's say redefine it again, remove this one. A is still five. So if we say A plus equal five, this will add on top of A, a five. If we say B equals five, and we try to do the same, it will give us an error because B is basically a thing. So the same things that we um, learned previously also apply here. So let's go back to the A. A we said now it's now 10 because we added five on top of it. The same thing would be A minus equal four. So this will give us a six or A over three. So that's six over three, that's two. Here it's changed to a float or a plus equal, oh sorry, uh, times equal five. So that's two times five back to 10 as a float. The important thing that I wanted to show here is that with mathematical operations, you might change the type of data. So usually you might get some errors that you don't know where these errors came from. It's always worth it to, to check what are the types of data that you have or what are you, what are you dealing with. 